Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic, and I'm back with another video. Now today I want to give you some pointers on things to look for as far as symptoms and how to replace an electronic throttle body on a 2.4 liter world engine. It's commonly found in your Jeep Patriots, your Jeep Compasses, your Chrysler 200s, and your Dodge Calipers. Mostly all of your front wheel drive compact Chrysler vehicles. Now when you have a problem with your electronic throttle body, you may notice a few different symptoms. One of them may be an audible noise that you hear under the hood every time you turn the key on. It's going to sound like a woodpecker. It's kind of a buzzing type, tapping type noise that goes for a few seconds. And each time you cycle that key off and on, you hear it again. The other obvious items are check engine lights, uh, traction control light, also ABS light. So what you need to do then at that point is check to see what codes you have. Now in the particular vehicle I'm going to show you the repair on, we had two main trouble codes. We got a P2111, which means that the throttle body could not be commanded closed, and we had a P2112, meaning that the throttle body could not be commanded open. So basically we had no movement from the throttle body, and of course it set a code. And those codes actually caused the ABS and the traction control lights to come on based on that. So, I'm going to go ahead and go inside the vehicle, I'm going to cycle the key, and I'm going to give you a chance to actually hear that sound I'm telling you about, so that way you know kind of basically what's going on. And then after that, we're going to go dive into actually removing and replacing it. And then I'm also, as an added bonus, going to take one apart and we're going to see what the part was that failed. Let's go ahead and get started. Now when it comes time to replacing that electronic throttle body, the actual removal from the intake is pretty cut and dry. The thing you're going to have issues with is where the rubber intake goes down to the throttle body. Depending on the vehicle you're working on, you don't have as much clearance between the intake and the radiator. So you got to get down in there to get the band clamp off where the rubber inlet goes on the throttle body. And the other issue is there's a wiring harness that attaches to the back side on this rubber inlet. It's got a little push pin type Christmas tree fastener and you have to try to get that off. That's probably the hardest part of the entire job. Now in order to remove this rubber inlet from the upper air filter housing, what we gotta do is back off on this clamp right here. You can use either an eight millimeter or a flat tip screwdriver. Either one will work fine. Just back it off and then slide it off. Now we got the same kind of clamp down here on the throttle body as we did at the air filter housing. So you can either use an 8mm once again, or usually if you don't have a lot of clearance, a short flat tip screwdriver will work fine. So luckily this one's been off before, so I don't have the harness that's attached to it. But if I did, it would be located right here in this general area. See that little hole right there? That's where the harness would be on the back side and a little Christmas tree type fashioner pushed through it. Someone's been on it before and they've actually taken it off, they never reinstalled it. Sometimes when you're taking that off, it'll break coming off, so don't have any worries if that happens. Just make sure it's routed in a proper location so that way it don't rub up against nothing. Or you could use a wire tie to attach the harness there. But nonetheless, that's what you're gonna be fighting with. If it had been hard plastic, you'd be able to pry it off easily, but because it's rubber, it flexes, so as you're trying to pry, it flexes with it. And that's going to be the hardest part to get loose. So now we got access to our electronic throttle body. Now it's attached to the plastic intake with a total of four 10 millimeter bolts. The back two have a bracket that has to be taken off first, and that's attached with a 13 millimeter bolt right here, where the bell housing for the transmission meets the engine. So take that 13 off, then you can get the two 10s off here, and then these two 10s. And then we've got one electrical connector right here we've got to squeeze in on, and then we can take that off. Now all I'm going to use is a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench to get that bolt off, or you can use anything from my 3H drive with a short 13, that'll work fine. 
and just work it off. I'm gonna go ahead and take the connector loose next and then I'll work on the remaining four bolts. All you gotta do is squeeze in on both sides and pull it off. If you look right up here, right above the connector, you'll see this plastic Christmas tree fastener. That's the one I was telling you about that you gotta kind of fight with when it comes time to take it off that rubber boot that goes from the upper air filter down to the throttle body. So if it's still intact, make sure you reinstall it. That way it doesn't rub up against something it's not supposed to when you go back with everything. Now that we've got the 13 off, the electrical connector, we'll move on to the total of four 10 millimeter bolts we need to take off. Now the bolts are gonna be pretty much long enough to where you can keep them in the throttle body and take it off all as one. Let's go ahead and get something down in there. I'm just using a cordless impact. All I gotta do is grab the assembly, even with the bracket on it, and lift it up. Now we got access to everything. And this is our throttle body assembly now that we've taken it off. You can clearly see the four 10 millimeter bolts I showed you, that bracket and that 13 we backed off that goes between the engine and the transmission right at the bell housing. Now we can just go ahead and take that off, take the remaining bolts off. Now what I want to do is show you what happens on the inside of the throttle body to make it go bad. And this is the one we just took off. This is one that I took off previously. What I did is I went ahead and took the cover off of the side and inside is where you got all the gears and all the electronics that actually control that throttle body because remember there are no cables everything's done electronically. You got the motor here, you got a transfer gear here and then up under this circuit board you've got the actual gear that controls the throttle plates. So if you were to go ahead and take it completely apart and look at the back side of that transfer gear what you'd find out is got some damaged teeth around the perimeter. Not only does the transfer gear have damaged teeth, but if I take it further apart, we end up finding out that the plastic gear for the throttle plate is damaged right there where it meshes with the transfer gear. Now it's just a matter of time before it happens in some cases because you got temperature, you've got stress, you got a lot of different things that can cause it to happen. One thing is the spring tension on the throttle plate. It actually takes some effort to hold it open. If I let go, it instantly snaps shut and you can hear it and you can feel it and like I said I'm having to work it there it's not easy to move so just think about the stress that's on that between that gear and this gear and like I said it's plastic eventually there's a possibility it's gonna fail now the only repair for this is actually replacement of the entire assembly now the actual seal for the throttle body is located on the intake make sure you replace that and I'll show you that in just a few seconds and also, if you're going to be reusing this for some reason, say you're replacing the intake and reusing the throttle body, go ahead and make sure that this surface here where that O-ring is going to make contact is clean. And at this time, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and clean it as well if you're going to be putting it back on the vehicle. And just like anything else on these engines, there's a sequence you need to tighten the bolts up in, and there's also a torque spec. Now, what we're going to start with is the actual mounting bolts for the throttle body to the plastic intake and we're going to go 65 inch pounds 65 inch pounds and the pattern we're going to use is one two three and four and like I said that's 65 inch pounds now that 13 millimeter bolt for the bracket that goes on the bell housing that's going to be 18 foot pounds 18 foot pounds on that 13 millimeter bolt right there so if you look right here, you'll see this orange, almost kind of a reddish color O-ring. That's the sealing O-ring for where the throttle body bolts to the plastic intake. Now all it takes is a little flat tip screwdriver or possibly a angled pick like this to get down in there. Grab the old one, remove it. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and clean that area. Make sure we ain't getting nothing built up on there. We're gonna grab our replacement. And this one's green, color doesn't really have any effect. Just make sure it's the same diameter, the same thickness. Make sure it's fully seated. Now that it's fully seated, we can grab that throttle body, put it on here, tighten down the 10 millimeter bolts like I mentioned, and also the sequence I mentioned, and not to mention that 13 millimeter that has the bracket on the bell housing.
And don't forget your 13. You also need to go ahead and plug in that connector. Make sure it's fully seated. There you have it. Now we got that last bolt torqued down. We're going to work on to reinstalling the rubber inlet or boot, whatever you want to call it, that goes from the throttle body up to that air box. Remember, you got a band clamp down here and you got a band clamp up top. And you use either an 8 millimeter or a flat tip screwdriver, whatever works best for you. Like I said, the right thing to do is to reinstall that plastic Christmas tree fastener into that hole that's on the side of that elbow to keep it routed properly. That's the correct thing to do. Whatever you do is up to you, but if you want to do it the way it's supposed to be, that needs to be reinstalled. Now to help you install this a little bit easier, what you can do is put you a little smear of grease right here where this goes on the throttle body and also up here where it goes on the air filter housing. It wouldn't hurt to put some right here on the hole that you're going to be pushing that harness routing Christmas tree fastener back through as well. Just take your time when you're repositioning it down in here. That way you don't break something off you're not supposed to. Line everything up, make sure it's fully seated, and then just tighten down your clamps. Now once you've got everything back together, there's one more step that's recommended by the service information. And it's what they call an ETC relearn. Now it's going to take a specialized scanner that's capable of doing that procedure your low budget scanners or your code readers are not capable and don't have that feature. Now what I would rather you try first is this. Let's start the vehicle up. Let's make sure we have all the codes cleared out, that we don't have any lights on the dash. And let's see what the throttle response is when we depress the gas pedal. Everything's feeling fine. Take it on a short test drive around your neighborhood. Somewhere where you feel safe, that you're not going to impede traffic in case you get that dead pedal again. Something to that effect. If everything's testing fine at that point, I think you're pretty much going to be good to go. But if you have a light or you have a drivability issue, at that point you're going to have to have to relearn perform. You could either have someone come to your house if you know any mechanics with that type of equipment to do it there, or you may have to have it towed somewhere to have it done. The vehicle that we use in the video when we installed the electronic throttle body, I didn't have any issues when I fired it up. I had a good throttle response, so I didn't have to worry about it. But being that I'm at a dealership and I have the equipment, it's just second nature for me to go ahead and do the relearn. So just try it and see what happens. So now you know what the symptoms are when you've got a bad electronic throttle body and also the steps needed to actually replace it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can like me on Facebook. You can check me on Twitter and Instagram as well. And if you got any comments or suggestions about today's video on that 2.4 world engine electronic throttle body or anything Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram related you can always email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner once again everybody thanks for watching all these videos and make sure to hit that subscribe button